the cutting edge of anomaly research, you are about to experience the evidence with your host, 3D pioneer and image analyst with Mars X 3D, D.W. Gannett. Well, hello there and welcome to episode number 56 of The Evidence. This is your buddy Dave over at Mars X3D and want to give a shout out to my friend Jimmy Roberts and his lovely wife Missy. They have both recovered from COVID-19 and uh, his latest video over at The Real Jimmy Roberts One details some of the interesting uh, sensations, experiences they had with that. It's uh, worth seeing and of course he has wonderful artifacts that he's found this week including the fist at Rockness. So you'll want to check that out. Also MarsFam.net where he posts not only all his latest findings but X3D as well. So glad you ha have you both back on the uh, side of the living and uh, and you know remember last time we showed you this image uh, the one of the angular ruins from the high-rise and uh, I specified at that time that it looked like it could be an image artifact a processing artifact and indeed I did hear back from Neil Spence and he said yes uh, the software he was using as he attempt to texture map it <clears throat> to a, a 3d shape cause that pixel stretching in the in the side and it's really nothing at all so that one's gonna go in the uh, round file for now but uh, be sure to check out Neil Spence's work online he has a lot of amazing things he's found anyway we have a couple of things from the archives and a uh, real interesting find from Terry Burnett this week so let's get to it you realize of course that for those of you who can view X3D the entire NASA database of rover images is open season for 3D viewing especially the pan cams the nav cams and the has cams. All you gotta do is download them and look at them. If you find something you like, crop it and save it to your collection. Anyway, Oppie was cruising along the rim of a huge valley when it captured this large black cube jutting from the sandy rim. It's kind of hard to ignore, isn't it? Now I'm hoping you'll agree this is completely non-fractal. That diagonal slice, was it carved that way or is it an outer covering that was peeled away after the fact? Did Oppie roll up to it, maybe do a, a drilling analysis and get some high-res images? Well, as far as I know, not so much. However, I do like to think that NASA has enough curiosity to go do that simple task anyway and at least file away that classified data somewhere. Maybe someday when those classified files are finally opened and, and just remember we did pay for them, I suspect it will be a mind-blowing collection of irrefutable evidence of a past civilization. Then again, Maybe they actually did ignore all this blatant evidence and this will be as good as it gets for any of us, which is exactly why we do the work. Okay, two words, Neville Thompson. That's all you need to know if you're a serious anomalist. His gigapans and gigamacros especially are the gold standard for anyone looking for anomalies. His PDS pan on 710 is no different. It's practically crawling with oddities. You can find at least a half dozen in this context view alone. But we're going to focus on the target area for now. How can you miss that white object within the sheltering arms of a sphinx-like boulder? I put a white arrow on it anyway so you can't ignore it. It's totally different from the surrounding geology and it isn't doing a very good job of looking like a rock. From left to right you can see that it's kind of flat and curved with parallel bars at the top and a nice clean square just below them. But what really interests me is on the right end in the shadow. 
a hollow cylinder with bars running from one end to the other. The overall configuration reminds me of an antenna, so I mentioned that in the name. That's almost certainly not what it is, but you got to start somewhere, right? Now it's more than likely just pareidolia, but the Sphinx uh, appears to have a triangular head with a smiling face and two outstretched paws that cradle our anomaly. If there weren't so many other crazy anomalies in this pan, I'd just ignore the boulder and move on. But who knows? Maybe there's more here than meets the eye. Anyway, I just get the impression that this is some kind of antenna that snapped off during the cataclysm and came to rest here where it's been sheltered probably for thousands of years. Terry really cranks the anomalies out, doesn't he? We don't always see eye to eye on everything, but I have a ton of respect for his professional commitment and personal consistency. Terry found this one recently and it was just too good to pass up. I call it the Hangin' D, which would be a great name for a cattle ranch. Except it'd probably be next door to Skinwalker Ranch, but that's another story. You can just barely see it back there on the upper left. See what I mean? A perfect letter D that looks like it's hanging on a branch. <laughs> Man, I'd give a hog whistle and my, my best shooting marble to know the story behind this one. This is one of those NASA images that has a screen door a cover over it, so there was a good bit of degaussing involved to get a halfway decent image. We're going to get all blurry in the next one, and the screen door will be right in your face. Believe me, I'm open to ideas on this one. Until I get a better answer, I'm just going to assume this is a boundary marker for the Hangin' D Ranch. This is a classic find that's been presented by any number of researchers over the years, but this is the first time in 3D. It's pretty hard to miss it over there on the left. It looks like someone stepped on a tube of toothpaste. I took the time to go deep into the pixels and enhance what is actually present in the pixels. Plus, did some adjustment to contrast, degaussing, you get the idea. I spent a lot of time on this one. Please don't tell me this is a natural formation. Could lava squeeze out of a hole and do a, a Play-Doh factory imitation? Well, I suppose so. But what about that right angle piping and that cylinder on the bottom? Is this supposed to provide cooling or distilling for some liquid like maybe water? Yeah, I know, irresponsible speculation. What's also odd is the shadow on the rock in front of the piping. It matches the right angled structures, but it can't be their shadow because the light is coming from the high upper left. So where does this shadow originate? I couldn't figure it out, but maybe it's indicative of a similar structure hidden by the cliff itself. Or maybe it's indicative of more image manipulation on the production end of things. Hey, thanks for stopping by today. I hope you saw something you liked and hope you'll consider sharing this channel with other people of like mind. If you liked what you saw, please give me a thumbs up. That's the only way I know to keep doing what I'm doing. This is your buddy Dave over Mars X3D. Be well. <laughs>